When we think of bacteria, we often think of disease. However, most bacteria don't have anything to do with humans. And most of the ones that do actually help us. For example, there are trillions of bacteria in your intestines right now, helping you break down your dinner. In this video though, we're going to focus on those few bad ones that infect humans and cause disease. If you remember from our cells video, bacteria are single-celled organisms and are about 100 times smaller than our own cells. Although they can reproduce by themselves, bacteria often replicate rapidly within our bodies because of the good food supply. At the same time though, they might produce toxins, which make us feel ill by damaging our cells and tissues. An example of this is the case of salmonella bacteria, which causes food poisoning. We can catch it from any food that's been contaminated with the bacteria, but most often it's by eating chicken that caught the disease whilst it was alive. In the UK though, most chickens have to be vaccinated against salmonella, so it's relatively rare. However, if you do happen to catch it, then you're likely to get a fever, stomach cramps, vomiting, and diarrhea. Which, if you think about it, kind of makes sense, because it affects your intestines, so you get tummy problems. Generally, it passes by itself within a week, and people just need to make sure that they stay well hydrated and have a sick bowl close by. Another bacterial disease is gonorrhea, and it's an example of a sexually transmitted disease, or STD. Like all STDs, it's passed on through sexual contact. For example, having unprotected sex. The main symptoms are pain when urinating, and a thick yellow or green discharge from the vagina or penis. When you think about any disease, you should think about prevention and treatment as two separate categories. For gonorrhea, the best prevention is avoiding unsafe sex, and using barrier methods of contraception, like condoms. For treatment, we used to better use the common antibiotic penicillin, which would cure it without any issues. However, now lots of gonorrhea strains, which just means the different types of gonorrhea, have become resistant to penicillin. So we're having to use rarer and more expensive antibiotics. If you haven't heard yet, you can find all of our videos on our website, cognito.org. You'll also find questions, flashcards, exam style questions, and past papers. And we track all of your progress so that you always know what to study next. So sign up for free by clicking here or browse our playlist here on YouTube.